I noticed Good everybody did. How are you? How's everybody this evening? Great. Okay. Hey. Right. <laughs> Notice here given that the city council of Pine, Texas will hold a regular meeting at 5 30 p.m. on Tuesday, March 15th, 2021, in council chambers at 803 West Holland. In person, attendance will be limited to 15 people total, including elected officials, staff, and public and via Zoom conference in the city of Alpine, Texas. Meeting login details may be found at www.cityofalpine.com uh, for the purpose of considering the attested. This notice is posted pursuant to the Texas Open Meeting Act, section 551.043, Texas Government Code. Members of the audience will be provided an opportunity to address on any agenda I have to determination of quorum and proof of no of Zoom meeting comments and questions and rules procedures are listed on the city website. Remarks will be limited to a total of three minutes per person. Please email your name to Gio Calderon at g.calderon at ci.alpine.tx.us. If you have a petition or other information pertaining to your subject, please email it to the city secretary beforehand. All names wanting to make public, public comments at the meeting will be queued up and given to the mayor at the section of the meeting. The mayor will call most individuals one at a time and our meeting moderator will take you off mute to make comments. This will function the same as our existing signing sheet in council chambers. Please note, you must include your full name first and last along with what ward you reside in or have business, business interest in. If you do not live or own property in the city, Please state that in your email. State law generally prohibits the council from discussing or taking any action on not included on the agenda, but if appropriate, the council may schedule the topic for future discussion or refer the matter to staff. No personal attacks on council members or will be allowed. The mayor and or city council members may call a point of order to stop personal attacks. If an individual continues to personally attack elected official or staff member in a meeting, they may be barred. Now I'll call this meeting to order. Will everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas, Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, Texas, one state, under God, one, one, and indivisible. Thank you all very much. City Secretary, welcome back. Thank you, sir. Okay, do we have a quorum? Uh, Mayor, we do have a quorum I'm waiting on Councillor Stevens to uh, join us. And the notice was posted at 2 p.m. on March 12, 2021. Okay. Do we have any public comments, Gio? Yes, sir. We do have uh, Dr. Avinash Rangra up first. Okay. I think uh, he might have wanted to speak later in the meeting. Dr. Rangra, okay. do you want to do you want to speak relative to the mayor's information and discussion item, or do you want to make? Uh, it won't be till section eight, so it's going to be after all the staff reports. Do you want to wait? Okay. Okay. So uh, next up, we have Mr. Thomas Lewis. Okay. And he's present in council chambers today. Yeah. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Lewis. Good evening, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Tommy Lewis, and I'm from Ward 4. Uh, I bought a house in uh, Alpine two years ago, uh, and uh, I'm, uh, I chose the house. I chose the location partly because of its uh, proximity to all of the hardware stores and you know, uh, coffee and I could bicycle everywhere here. Uh, but I ran into a little bit of, uh, I guess it's just general hostility towards bicycles. And I find it odd uh, that 
this is a tourist community, yet if I'm on my bicycle, I'm likely to get a cigarette dumped at me and uh, blowing coal or yelled at to get out of the road. So it's, it's very few occasions, but it, it has. And uh, recently I got uh, knocked over just crossing the street at Fifth Street by the uh, Sunshine House going to Porters. And the woman was you know, turning east on Holland, looking west at the oncoming traffic. And then when it was clear, she took off without looking the other way. Uh, an honest mistake, but when I fell over, uh, she yelled at me like, what the hell? And with no apology or are you okay or anything. And so there's an attitude shift that I would like to try to address. And uh, also infrastructure with uh, crosswalks, maybe blinking signs, um, and a general lowering of the speed limit through town to at least 25 miles an hour on Holland and East Street. Uh, that there's a light at Pitt and a light at Cockrell. And I've noticed that people race from that life to the next uh, they have to be going over the speed limit many many times especially in the morning when people are late for work so i just wanted to uh, raise that awareness and uh and, and work with you I, i've done a lot of bad bicycle habits to see in uh, dublin ireland and los angeles and san francisco and in dallas so uh, i'm offering my uh service and um and hoping for your cooperation Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Uh, that concludes the public comments for this evening. Okay, thank you, Jill. Okay, we don't have any presence. Uh, we go to reports, city mayor report. And the first one's gonna be on the governor's new order, GA 34. And I think you all, all are aware that he has lifted the ban on the mandatory wearing of masks in public and in business locations. Uh, also, he opened up all the businesses to 100%, which is great for the economy. But I don't agree uh, with the fact of the lifting the ban on the mask. I think it's too early. Uh, we just started the vaccination. We're just now barely getting a handle on vaccinating many of our folks here, but we still lack uh, a lot of our citizens out here, especially the middle aged and teenagers and the youngsters. And uh, I'm proud to say that around and being at the stores, uh, most of your business locations still have the sign saying mandatory wearing of masks. And I see majority of the people, more than the majority of the people staring with it, still wearing their masks uh, in public and in the business location, which is fantastic. Uh, we're not over this yet. And we're gonna have to wait till after spring break when folks start testing here in another week or so to see there's gonna be an increase uh, people still continue to die uh, because of COVID-related issues. We had three just recently in Midland, and we had one here in Alpine. So I strongly recommend that folks uh, voluntarily continue to wear their masks. I know I wear mine everywhere I go, uh, especially in the grocery stores and uh, the different merchants around town. It's for my protection and the protection of others. Uh, so I just want to uh, stress that point that... Uh, I think we should continue to wear our mask in public, okay? And uh, I've got some recognitions and uh, this is for all the outside departments, including APD. When we had our big freeze here in Alpine a few weeks ago, uh, these folks all came together as one unit working with one another. We had some issues with uh, one of the wells up at Sunny Glen and everybody was out there working and it was freezing cold. I mean, these poor guys were out there in that below uh, sub-freezing weather. They did a fantastic job. So I wanna compliment everybody that was out there. Also the fact that they were taking generators to folks that needed them there on dialysis or, uh, or uh, breathing apparatuses. Uh, it helped our, our citizens. We all survived it. It was tough. It was real tough, especially on the elderly being out of uh, electricity for four days. Some sections did have electricity through the whole ordeal, but our uh, public works departments all did a fantastic job. APD also, uh, great job. So I just wanted to uh, recommend and highly recognize these folks for the fantastic job they did 
and city manager, you were out there with them also. And, you know, you and I were keeping in touch as to what was uh, going on the whole time. We were very fortunate that uh, our water held up. We had good water pressure. We had a little issue with it, but in a short time it was uh, back up and running. Whereas other cities are still boiling their water. We didn't have to do that. So kudos to, to those guys out there. Okay, so let's move on um, and let's get down to um, city attorney reports. Thank you, Mayor. Can, can everybody hear me okay? Um, I would like to address, there was an issue uh, about a couple of weeks ago where there was a very ugly attack on our city manager on social media. And I wanted to address that. There was also an open records request for the minutes of the meeting for when he was hired. And I wanted to look into that and be sure that the city was uh, where they should be and there's not any problems. Uh, my discussion, uh, my discovery, um, I first I looked at uh, the meetings, the minutes of the meetings, which of course synopsize everything. So I didn't find the answer I needed to in there about the use of the vehicle. So I pulled the meeting for September 3rd of 2019 when the city manager, Mr. Zimmer, did an open interview in uh, this exact council room where anybody in the public could address any concerns they had about him. Now, during that meeting, uh, it, it took a while because there's, there's two different videos there, but uh, at 45.57 minutes into that meeting, Mr. Zimmer is discussing his car allowance, which, so everybody understands, city managers have a 24, our job pretty much. There's not a nine to five, and then you go home and you don't ever get calls. They're required to be places and do things with the city. And I believe Mr. Zimmer did that a couple of weeks ago during the snowstorm and everything. Uh, at 45.57 into the, um, the meeting is whenever he discussed the car allowance with the council. And at 49.16 minutes into the meeting, he talked about doing a little more travel back and forth because he lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico. That was the entire council and, and all the public was where he, where he lived when they were interviewing him that night. And then at 123 into the meeting, uh, Councilman Stevens talked about, we're gonna get more detail in your salary contract. So that was the next step that I went to. Uh, the salary contract, which was signed not only by every council member present at that time, but by the mayor and it discussed the city allowance of the city car allowance and it is quote i'm going to quote it the manager's duties require the manager to have the exclusive and unrestricted use comma at all times during the manager's employment with the city comma of a fully equipped automobile so just to put citizens Kind of fears or concerns to rest in the councils that might have concern or the mayor. I just want to, you to know that was in his contract at the beginning, September 3rd, 2019. It was later signed by everybody. There's been no questions raised about it until a couple of weeks ago. And I just wanted to clear that up that I don't see any legal issues with it. It's a completely valid contract. That's kind of the standard of care for city managers is to have unrestricted use of the vehicle. And I just wanted to pass that along so anybody out there listening might, that might have had some concerns knows these are the facts of what happened and this is the real truth. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Yes, inundated calls on this, uh, especially mainly on the automobile issue. And I had several uh, attorneys that were calling me that were contract specialists and they had uh, a different opinion of the car allowance. So I think that's why I called you, okay? Because they uh, have different opinions versus, you know, uh, versus what you had just stated. So uh, I'm glad you brought that up, okay? Yeah, because that's the difference about contracts. The thing about contracts is you can contract for just about anything and you try to specify your contract to the, the events and the particular purpose which you're gonna do it in that particular area using those particular means. So I, I, I say I would disagree with them. I think you can contract for anything unless it's illegal. And I, you know, I'd like to hear any other attorney tell me you can't do that. Okay, thank you for that information, attorney. I have a question, Mayor, please. 
did you place a call to our city manager when all those calls were coming in? And before uh, uh, contacting Ms. Wilson? Who are you talking to? To you, sir. Oh, me. I called him uh, the following Monday and Is I didn't get it. So not prior to talking to Ms. Wilson. What's that? But not prior to talking to Ms. Wilson. No, 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 no. Uh, well, I had called him um, morning, I believe, and I think I talked to the city attorney. What was it, Saturday, Sunday, some Sunday? It was Saturday, and, and you also called me Monday. Yeah, and which uh, you didn't return that call. Did uh, I so, did I not and, uh, understand what had happened a few meetings before, where we were to contact the city manager before contacting the city attorney? I don't recall that that conversation. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll look at minutes and get back with you on that. Thanks. Yes, Thanks. yes, please do. You know. Okay, and uh, the coin coin operated business. Yeah, oh, coin operated business. Uh, I'm I'm working. We should have a a a, a list set up of check checklist off for them to uh, for the the building manager David Hell's one going and doing it right. Yes. For him to go and do it, I should have that checklist ready probably the first part of next week about what he can check off and some some things that are going to make it where depending on the uh, seriousness, I'll take off my mask. Depending on the seriousness of the infraction. How many uh, uh, infractions you get citations for before they revoke your permit completely? And I think there should probably be no more than three or point operating uh, uh, operating businesses here in Alpine because you can pretty well regulate that yourself. Yeah. Uh, just for the size of the town, I just they're, they they cause a lot of problems. I know the mayor had a lot of issues and calls from people about issues with these things and. And I've seen nothing but trouble come from them. So we're going to try to, we're going to hone in and, and I should have that ready to be put in an ordinance form where they can do a checklist off that's going to make it where they really, we're going to really make them follow the guidelines. And that's what we're going to get done on that. So it should be ready to go on the next uh, two weeks from now. Okay. In, in my sense, Sandy, too, is that the uh, limiting the amounts, as you talked about, to three or four, that seems to be in alignment with what Chief and David are sharing with me as well. Yes, and I, I don't see any problems with that in some of the case law that they have. Mainly it's the length, of, it's the the, uh, the case of in, in uh, the appeals court have been about shutting them down for periods of time. We can't really shut them down, but we can sure give them a citation every day. And so I think as long as we stick to what our ordinance says and limit the number of them there, that should help. Sandy, how many do we have at uh, at present? Yeah, four. Is that correct? Four. We we were at five and we're down to four. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That last one, that fifth one, we had trouble with Mayor. Um, after they uh, raided it, they shut down. That was a big yeah. violation as well. So that would have resulted in in a, a probably a permanent closure of that permit for that person. Right. The seriousness of what they did. Just kind of let, uh, left that night. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your report. And let's move on to city manager report. All right. Let me share my screen. Can everybody see that? Got it. All right. I will get through my stuff so that we can get to the real staff reports with David and, and Chief Martin. Uh, want to give everybody a quick update on, on COVID. I know the mayor talked a little bit uh, earlier about uh, some of the recent <clears throat> case volumes. Uh, interesting enough on this site that I go to uh, before each meeting, the COVID Act Now site, uh, typically we're getting the vaccination number. If you remember two weeks ago, it was about 23.5% of Brewster County. Uh, that is showing as an unknown. Uh, it showed that yesterday. My sense is we're, we're getting up closer to about 30% of our county, um, which, which uh, certainly is an important indicator. A lot of the articles that we're reading out there now are showing is the vaccinations are going up, uh, then plus people who've had COVID. It seems like the new case counts are going down. Uh, 
went through the New York Times uh, information yesterday and today as well. And it, it's really in alignment there. Um, you know, our uh, really keeping our hospitals freed up so that they can deal with other emergencies is super important. Right now, uh, as of yesterday, we had zero uh, COVID cases uh, at our local hospital, so that was good. Uh, positive test rate is still low. Um, we've got rapid tests for our city police department, uh, school district, uh, as well as uh, Saw Ross State University. So those are all good indicators for us. Uh, we did not have the CV team meeting this morning. Um, but with that being said, there was about 17 active cases in um, Brewster County right now, zero hospitalizations. Uh, I don't have a time on our next testing, uh, but we continue to work through the vaccinations. I think those folks that uh, are coming to our city website are seeing the methods to go out there and, and get an alignment, talk to your primary care physician, call the hospital, call over here to the clinic across from, from the high school, get on the list, uh, 1A, 1B, 1C, and a lot of our population fits into that category. So one thing that has happened at, at, uh, at least with my phone is I'm not getting uh, more frantic calls from people. Uh, that's really subsided. And uh, so I think the communication plan has worked. Uh, I did look at the uh, university website this morning and noticed that they had zero active cases with both students and faculty. And uh, I know uh, that's been something that uh, Michael Pacheco, Pete's chief of staff and Pete have been really focused on this year. Um, school district was out last week for spring break, back this week. Uh, I think we will see if there's any pickup later in this week in COVID cases. Uh, though most of the kids are outside, outdoor type activities, uh, they're still wearing their masks when they're in, in, in the classroom. Moving forward, I know, um, you know Mayor talked a little bit about GA 34 went into effect March 10th. Um, we shared messaging on our website, shared it with council, shared it through a PSA on what uh, we're doing specifically from, from a city office perspective. And I think that the biggest uh, request we had from the community was to reopen the lobby here. Um, although we have the, the walk-up window, there were still some residents who really wanted to just walk inside the building. As we're all aware, our front lobby is pretty small and we've limited that to three people in there. It's worked well. Uh, we fumigated back through the building. We do that once a month, uh, really working to keep a, keep a safe environment there. Also, the other two places that we get a lot of traffic are our visitor center uh, and our animal shelter. And so at the visitor center, they, um, um, Heather's opened that up to five people in that facility. Um, she's wanted to keep the mask policy there. I wanted to keep the mask policy there. Gives people the comfort uh, as they walk in. She's also got a full assortment of materials outside on the porch. So our message to people is, hey, if you don't want to put a mask on, there's still great information out here and you can get taken care of. Um, the animal shelter, Jennifer's always got somebody <coughs> staffed there during open hours. You come up, you call the number, they let you in. And there's just really been no complaints uh, relative to that, that process or procedure. We've got quite a few dogs and cats there. So adoptions are starting to pick back up again. Um, and, and Jennifer and her team really seem to be doing a good job out there. Uh, Chris and I hosted a, uh, a call with our hoteliers, short-term rental folks this past week, asking them their perspective on policy. Uh, most of them are still gonna keep their COVID um, restrictions, PPE type thing in place. I think if you're going through Airbnb, your short-term rental, you still gotta <laughs> keep those uh, those processes in place. And uh, so very, uh, very genuine conversation there. And I think overall, we really see just tremendous ownership from the business owners taking responsibilities. Uh, restaurants, you know, if they want to continue on with a mass policy, when you enter the business, they're doing that. 
Certainly, if you're eating, it's very hard to, to wear a mask uh, while you're eating. Uh, the retail establishments, uh, some are um, still requiring masks in, some have taken down the signs. What our communication pattern is, um, if you're asking people to still wear masks and they don't, and you feel uncomfortable, then call uh, our, our Alpine dispatch and chief, one of Chief Martin's officers will come out. So that protocol really seems to, to work well. Um, so we're real pleased with that. Any questions relative to city offices? Uh, moving forward, it's a very, very interesting topic here, actually, West Texas uh, gas. Um, most of us probably don't pay all the uh, attention to all the particulars with what's happening at the federal level and FEMSA. Um, but the, the federal pipeline safety standard 49 CFR parts 192 for gas transmission were updated last year. They call it now the gas mega rule. Um, it was predicated on some of the pipeline bursts that had happened out there. So how do we do a better job at, at uh, testing those transmission lines all the way down to class three lines? And what that meant is West Texas gas, although we're purchasing gas from them in both Alpine and Fort Davis, they also have a few customers hanging off of those lines. So it, it basically created a class three infrastructure for them. So they came to us and, and wanted to basically give the city those parts of, of that uh, infrastructure so that they become a purely transmission driven provider um, for Alpine and Fort Davis. <laughs> what that means is all of their pipe then goes back to being categorized as class one and it does not have to be pressure tested, okay? The cost of pressure testing is a seventy-five dollars to $100,000 venture and we would bear actually part of that cost as a local provider as well as the testing would take each individual community down for two to three days. And of course, if you run a business and you have natural gas ovens, being closed two to three days is, is not always a healthy thing. And uh, West Texas Gas just really put the pen to the paper and said, hey, it would just make more sense if we uh, work back with the city of Alpine and gave some of these sections. So I'm giving an overview tonight. They're drafting up what that will look like. Sandy and I will then review it and present back to council about the end of April timeframe. One big benefit from this is we're gonna move city gate uh, for Alpine, which as you're going down highway 90 and you look off to the right, kind of before you get to Antelope Lodge, it's where our city gate is. We're actually gonna push that back into along Sunny Glen Road, the highway there, which is gonna give us the ability to go to the north and potentially start servicing customers in Sunny Glen uh, along that main route there. So this could be a real win for, uh, even though they're not citizens per se of the city of Alpine, they all do business here. Many of them have properties in Alpine as well. And it would allow us to, to grow out uh, that, that set of customers. Uh, so I think it's, it's gonna be a real win-win situation. Three, uh, three of their team members uh, had come down here for the meeting with us this past week. So uh, Scott, Randy, uh, and two of our team members from our gas department were all involved in that meeting. So more to come, uh, but certainly important movement for us from the city. Uh, moving forward, I uh, wanted to just give a quick update on our financial audit. Uh, normally, uh, we're filed with the audit by March 31st this year due to uh, some setbacks between COVID travel restrictions, between the winter storm um, and a couple other pieces. Uh, they're just not going to be able to finish until the April timeframe. So we'll be targeting uh, more of the review and acceptance of the audit in April 20th. Um, you know, our debt payments and our grants, we have to file. Uh, we'll file the draft uh, audit with them by the end of this month, but just wanted council uh, to be aware of where we're at. 
with the audit this year, okay? Any questions for me before I hand over to David? All real, right. City manager, uh, real quick. Yes, sir. Do, yes. We, do we have an idea how many customers that we're gonna pick up in the Sunny Glen area? Uh, well, we won't pick them up immediately, Mayor. We're still gonna have right. to put in pipe out to, you know, going north there. But, you know, the potential would be we could pick up, you know, 20, 25 customers there. We're going to actually pick up, like in Fort Davis, I think they've got six or eight customers that they're going to hand over to us. Um, West Texas Gas is going to hand over to us. So we're going to have a net positive there of six or eight. And I think we've got two, two or three here in the Alpine area that we're going to uh, pick up from them. Okay. Okay. All righty. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, David. Uh, welcome, uh, council members. Thank you, uh, city manager Zimmer. Um, I'm gonna make this kind of short and sweet. If you have any questions, please, inter please interject uh, yeah, during my presentation. Um, this is a Q2, Q1 report. Uh, it's not as extensive as last report. Uh, it just kind of goes along with what we've been doing previously um, and what our goals were uh, for 2020, 2021. Uh, we have a new judge, thank God. We have a great city attorney and uh, we have a new code enforcement officer, code compliance officer, and we have a new cor uh, court clerk. So this fictitious um, formula here that I've put on the slide actually equates or makes an engine of a difference. And this is the difference in Alpine moving forward to 2020, 2021. Uh, next slide, please. Let's see if I can, are you controlling the slides? Yeah, did that, oh. did that pop up okay. for you, David? We sync this up. Can, um, I'm having a little trouble. Let's see. Okay. Is the screen share still showing for you? Oh, he seems frozen. All right. I wonder if his connection froze. Mayor, can you still hear me? Yes, sir, sure can. Okay. Let's give him a second to log back in. If not, we'll jump down to Chief and then come back to David. All right, Gio, do you see him coming back in? Not yet. Okay. <clears throat> All right, why don't we do this? Why don't we, why don't we jump down to the chief and then we'll come back to David. Ah, uh, wait, he's coming up. Let's see if. David, are you back with us? Let's go ahead and move over to the chief. Yeah, why don't, why don't we go ahead and jump on with the chief and then we'll come back to David. Good evening, council members, city manager. Good evening. We can barely hear you, chief. I pulled my mask down. Can you hear me now? Better. Better. Good. Okay. Yeah, good. This is the first quarter report 
for the police department. Uh, keep in mind, January, February, March, so it's really not a full report, and I do have some adjusted numbers than what's showing on the screen there. Um, when I first ran the reports on the statistics, uh, we were having, we had 278 citations. Since then, I run the report this morning and we're at 389 citations. I didn't put this on the screen, but we've also issued 285 warnings. That's a total of 674 traffic stops. Um, and I kind of wanted to relate that to 2020's uh, racial profile report where we, I turned in that we did 706 for the year. So we have some additional officers. Uh, that's part of the reason that our stats on our citations are up. Unfortunately, our accidents are way up. Uh, when I ran the report, it was at 15. Today it was at 16, and we got another one right as I was coming over, so we're at 17. And we have a lot of out-of-town people in, uh, a lot of people turning left from the right lane off of the one ways. That's what we're, we're dealing with a lot. Uh, Mr. Mayor cases, I reported 69, we're up to 71. Felony cases, I reported 23, we're up to 25. I made 38 arrests. Uh, I did do a traffic study on uh, Avenue B in Hancock, had a report of speeders in that area. And my report shows that we surveyed 296 cars in four different days. We conducted a survey. And out of the 296 cars, 253 vehicles were driving the speed limit are no more than four miles per hour over the speed limit. So that's 253 out of the 296. That's 85.5% of the vehicles, if you would, driving one to four miles over are at the proper speed limit. And actually it was 166 cars that were not going over the speed limit at all. Uh, that left 40% of the vehicle, or 40 of the vehicles, 13.5% were going between five and 10 miles per hour over the speed limit. And three vehicles, 1% of the vehicles were doing over 11 or 15 to 15 miles per hour over the speed limit in that area. So, you know, we're going to have people run over the speed limit, but I think our percentages are really good in that area. Uh, and I didn't see any need for any action taken in that area. Okay. And going to the completed training, uh, as you all know, COVID has really played a big part of us restricting doing any training. So we've done the best we can. It's really opened up since January, February, now March. And I've got some officers to get recertified in a lot of stuff, such as uh, less lethal. Uh, Lieutenant Coffin sent him to El Paso. And what this certifies him as is to certify other officers to utilize less lethal. So he's actually an instructor. Uh, Philip Piero, he has finished the basic fire uh, inspector and the plans examiner. He's finished his course. The only thing he has left is to take his state test. And right now, bless his heart, he's building flashcards and studying night and day almost to prepare to take his state test within the next two weeks. Uh, really, he's really put a lot of effort into this, this fire side of it. Uh, crime scene investigator, I sent three officers up to Saul Ross. This prepares them to uh, investigate a major scene or hold the scene until we can get the help there and take the scene over. Uh, sent three of the newer officers for that. So that's really good training for them. The COVID-19 testing. Uh, myself and Daryl, as you all know, we kind of got hit hard in the police department with COVID. And Mr. Scudder at the EMS came through for us and gave us some test kits but to utilize them, we had to get someone certified. So myself and Daryl get certified to conduct the COVID test kits. And we not only do it for the police officers and the dispatchers, we'll do it for anyone in the city. If you think you have COVID, come see us. We can conduct the test and we also report it to the state. 
uh, miscellaneous training. We've kind of had six officers go out on their own and uh, from OSS to TML and utilize uh, their training uh, and doing everything virtual, do it online. So that's, that's, I really commend those officers for taking the initiative to see what they needed, went out and found the class, took the class, and turned in a certificate. Next slide. Training, upcoming training. Training. Most of these are required, uh, not all of them, but some are required. All of my peace officers, all peace officers start out in basic, then you move up to intermediate. So I'm concentrating on the intermediate classes at this point, so that once those officers have the time, and you have to have a certain amount of time on one side and a certain amount of required training on the other before you can move up to that next level. So my goal on my side is to offer the training where we're just waiting on their time. So uh, required is uh, the, uh, ah. That, that's what that's what's explaining. Um, I put it on the screen. Interaction, interaction with deaf and hard of hearing. That one is coming up, I believe, next week. Human trafficking. That's also required for intermediate certification. Sexual assault, family violence. The Spanish for police. And we also uh, learned today that we're going to have Spanish for dispatchers. That's also a requirement. I have one dispatcher that will move up as soon as we get her that class to an intermediate level. And I was told that we've never had an intermediate level dispatcher in our mind. So once she finishes that class, we'll have an intermediate. So I'm really, really proud to, of that. Uh, the crisis intervention, CIT, that's mandatory. And uh, I've got, I found out the other day I had to go to another chief school. I didn't know that. I have it scheduled for June again at Lehman at Huntsville. So I will be attending that training in June. The a couple more that I found out today is uh, we now have a March 29th, we'll be having a first response uh, first AED in first aid class. Uh, and I'll go over that here in a minute. But that can also be opened up to some other city employees. And I'll, I'll be with the city manager on that. And equipment purchased, this is where this is going to come in. And all of these items you see up there were, were purchased with grant money. So it didn't cost the tax, taxpayers anything. The first one is the 15 body cameras. I did take a picture of it, so I wore mine right here. I have 15 of these. These are great, as the city attorney knows, for evidential purposes, protects the officer, protects the defendant, protects the city. This is a great tool for the officers. Uh, purchase 15 of those. The ADs, I purchased 23 of them on a grant. I've already equipped all my patrol cars with AEDs. I've equipped my station with an AED. And I've got, I think I've got 11 AEDs left to distribute throughout the city and city offices. Uh, then that's where the training will come in. If those offices want the AEDs, I would strongly recommend sending someone to learn how to use the AED. It can definitely save a lot. The best and best carriers. Protects the officer, and it, it makes the officers uniform. I don't have the vest on, but the new vest carriers go over this type of shirt, and the vest is actually on the outside, not under the shirt like the old style. And you don't really even notice it. That's the actual vest, the picture right there, but it goes in the carrier that looks like this. So the officers are really excited about that. They come into the office or Unveil crow and cool off during the summer. Yeah, uh, it, it's really nice. Technology. The big one, uh, I talked to Brazos Technology, which is who, who I'm purchasing the five ticket riders from, and again, on a grant. Uh, I also purchased the software to make our ticket riders compatible with the city courts, where it's going to take a uh, lot less. You take the chance of less mistakes 
um, saves paperwork. It makes the paperwork easier for the city courts and minimizes your mistakes. It's just, it's just great all around tool. Uh, I ordered five. We don't have no more than three officers for the most on duty at one time. So these officers can use these ticket riders. Um, one of the, the big pluses that it does is it also produces my racial profile report for the end of the year. So now I'll have two ways of looking at my racial profile report and kind of proofing it, if you would, to be sure it's correct. Um, once the officer writes the citation, the citation will be downloaded and docked at the station. I will review those citations and email them over to the courts. Then the courts will be able to email them out to the attorney and the court clerk will actually be able to press a button and spit out the complaint where the officer actually fills out the complaint now. Uh, again, more room for error. It spits it out, we give it back to the officer. He signs it, turns it back into the court, and the prosecutor has everything she needs. It simplifies a lot of stuff. Dropbox. I'm going to be imp implementing the Dropbox, uh, the DA's office and the county attorney's office. What Dropbox is, is a way to send our case reports, any kind of video evidence, uh, any kind of statements we can scan in and put in a file and actually send those reports to the DA or the county attorney. Currently, we're all the time misplacing paperwork and having hard copies and getting it over there. They sign for it and then they'll lose something. So this way, this will be all in a digital file and I don't think that anything's going to be lost out of it. Um, The COG gave the police department a hard drive of ex extra equipment that they had. And I am having the hard drive rebuilt, putting a 16 terabyte hard drive in it. What I'm gonna utilize this for is video storage. It'll be from these body cameras and from our dash cams out of our car. Uh, these videos, like I said earlier, they can be attached to the Dropbox file sent over to the prosecutor. We're currently spending about $100 to $150 to get a one terabyte hard drive two to three times a year. And this one hard drive was $600. And I'm going to estimate it to last us four, hopefully five years. It just depends on how much footage that we have from our, our body cams. It takes up a lot of memory on that, on that, on that hard drive. Um, that's pretty much all I had. Does anyone have any questions? Awesome. On your, on your, oh, I'm sorry. No, go, go ahead. Go on ahead, your vest that you have, how are you going <clears> to <throat> reposition your body cam where it's going to because the vest to me on the picture looked like you couldn't get your body and that's always a concern. Okay. This camera, I have the clip on it. The officers won't be using this clip. The, the, what the officers are going to have is it's a big magnet. Oh, and, it, and I didn't put a picture of it. It's a big magnet to where if they have to tussle with someone and roll around on the ground, it's not going to fall off. So it's a magnet clip, and I got to tell you that magnet, if you get your fingers between the magnets, it hurts. So okay. it will actually clip to the carrier and stay right there. They can pop the camera out and download it or charge it and then pop it back in. But the mount stays on the carrier. And each officer is going to get two carriers uh, with their body armor that they can pull the body armor out, put it in a second uh, carrier, wash one carrier while they're wearing the and everything comes off and goes on another Great. Thanks, Chief. That it? Yep. Okay. All right. We'll pop back to David. David, were you able to get logged back on? I was. Actually I had uh, three great questions for Chief, but we'll <laughs> move on. Uh, that was very interesting what he has. Uh, I got three questions for him later on. Um, 
the okay so we're back to the difference of what we're gonna what we're trying to accomplish in 2021 here um and code and code compliance basically so we've kind of restructured uh our how we're going about what we're doing and part of this uh it comes from having a new judge and a new city attorney and a new code and compliance officer and moving in the direction that we want to move into and part of this code compliance process, which we it's published on the our city website as well, and we'll update it uh, as we move forward throughout the year. But I, I want to run through this kind of quickly and still be able to read it for everyone who's viewing. Uh, number one, we report uh, possible violations received. Two, property is scheduled for inspection. This is the kind of the process that we're going to work through. Uh, some of the things that we do. Um, on violations that are, most of the violations are, are state mandated. In other words, if we have a fine of $200 or up to $200, that comes from a state code. If we have something that goes up to $4,000, $2,000, those are uh, violations that in, include health, uh, life safety violations or, or EPA violations. So those are a little different, uh, just like a, a an officer who would write a parking ticket um, that might be $35 and they pay their parking ticket and they move on. So those kind of violations receive uh, citations immediately. Everything else in the city of Alpine, we're moving forward to abate. And what we've decided is to give um, violation or the defendants time to abate. And that's the most important thing. So we wanna make sure that now moving forward, we are approachable. Uh, city of Alpine understands uh, certain situations, certain cases, and that it may take a little bit more time to do some, to abate some of these situations. It took a long time to, uh, it, it may have taken two, three or four years to collect all the things that are in a yard, and we don't expect you to remove them in two days. And we're not going to come in here and try to uh, give you a violation and, and give you a fine of $10,000 because you can't logistically get this stuff out of your yard and into a, uh, the landfill or wherever it's a recycling center. Number three, if violations exist, the violator is notified first by personnel contact and or letter given a period of time to correct the violation. Number four, property is re-inspected at expiration of time period. Number five, if violation has not been corrected, a notice of civil violation may be issued. Failure to correct a violation may be subject to fines. Number six, when a violation has been resolved, case is closed. Number seven, major violations such as demolition of a home, building, mobile home, work without a permit, hazardous waste, et cetera, the code compliance officer will explain the abatement process with the offender. Some of the number seven, some of these fines come with, uh, or some of these violations come with an automatic citation. Next slide, please. Thank you. So we have a combination of uh, our first quarter and second quarter. Um, these are some of the descriptions of offenses that have occurred previously that are still uh, haven't been resolved or closed, the cases haven't been closed out. Don't worry too much about the amounts of violations. Uh, those are not the exact amounts. Those are just what the ticket was written for. Um, but as you look through this list, uh, you can see that section 54 or, uh, or section 206 uh, codified 54 is, a major, is mainly the violations that we deal with on a daily basis. Uh, 82, disposal of construction demolition waste. Now that we have an increase in construction and building in the city of Alpine, we're having more issues now with demolition waste because they really don't know where to take this or they don't, there hasn't been any definitive uh, place, uh, procedures in place for these con uh, contracts to, contractors to understand what they're supposed to do with their material during the construction process. Uh, ne next slide. Please. So building services policy and procedures have been defined. Now we have a new workable, well-defined way of conducting business. 
Uh, I think that we brought this up previously uh, before uh, the first quarter uh, in the council meeting when we were explaining what we were gonna be doing in 2021. Uh, contractors are responding positively and are working hard to keep up with the demand for building and construction. So we, we have seen an increase thus far in building. Uh, electricians, mechanical contractors, and plumbers who live and work in Alpine have been very busy uh, the past two quarters and have more work available than they are able to complete. And basically what that means is, is that we don't have enough qualified, licensed electricians, mechanical contractors, and plumbers in the city of Alpine right now. Now that may change in two years, but right now we have a little bit of an increase in building construction and they're in high demand right now. So total permits for the last two quarters are here on the left-hand side. And these are the total permit fees for the last two quarters. So we're moving along pretty good. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Alpine ISD project is moving forward, uh, probably a misspelling, and our department is working with third party engineers and imperial construction regarding inspections and special inspections for underground utilities and spread footings. Um, Alpine I ISD is a little behind right now, but if you think about it, we're here in Alpine, logistically, we're not a big city, so when Imperial Construction has their uh, subcontractors on site, they're gonna move through a two week period. Uh, they're gonna have new contractors, new subcontractors on site. And it's just kind of a, it's a hit or miss kind of thing. So they're, honestly, I project Alpine ISD being behind at least a month in this entire project. But it's not that, to say that they can't get the job done, it's just that they're gonna be behind. Uh, a few new projects are in progress here in Alpine now are the Trans-Pecos Motor Bank on Holland Avenue, if you've seen any construction or demolition on that. Uh, the new Dollar General is moving forward quickly. Um, and they've got probably, we've set up some AAP, um, the AAP had some electrical issues previously, but now we've got those worked out. So they should still be on schedule uh, for their opening. And then of course the Alpine Food Pantry had a slow start, but now it's moving forward and that's on Gallego behind Jackson Field. And so that is gonna be here in the near future. So they've, they've already started their site plan, their form boards, and I believe they're plumbing as well. So that kind of wraps up what we're doing right now. The focus right now is mainly uh, moving forward to keep Alpine beautiful and that's what we talked about last year. Uh, and then the new uh, municipal court being in session and being able to implement all of the great ideas and to keep Alpine beautiful and move forward. I, you know, it's, it's amazing because citizens now, I've, I've been talking to contractors and citizens and really they're interested. They, I mean, I've had a lot of complaints come in because and we're talking in areas that you wouldn't think these complaints would be coming in, but they are. And they're about citizens who are saying, listen, you know, I'm tired of looking at that person's yard uh, or I'm tired of uh, seeing this or that. And it's like, I want to clean it up. And it's like, I've cleaned my side up. Now it's time for them to clean their side up. And I think Alpine can, it is on the way that it needs to go. It's just that it needs a little help. And right now I think we're moving forward in the right direction. But that's about it. If you have any questions, let me know. Yeah, David, I've got one. There's a business behind the subway, uh, right behind the railroad easement. What's that about? I believe that's the new, uh, well, new or old, should I say, uh, ice manufacturing facility. That's what it yeah. looked like. I wouldn't for sure. They're, they're required to go through a conditional use permit. Uh, for the ice manufacturing, which they've submitted. So they're in the process of uh, applying for the permits and put it in and submitting their documentation. And so they can go through plan review. City council will have to approve it. Uh, it, it is in a zone that uh, accepts it through conditional use. Okay. All right, thank you, sir. Yes, thank you. Okay, sir. Only council can ask. Okay, thank you, Mayor. We're done. We're done. Okay. 
Let's go ahead and move on to public hearings. Public hearings, hearings to obtain citizen views and comments regarding the second and final reading of ordinance 2021-0301 and ordinances rescinding and repealing the, adopt, the adaptation of ordinance 2020-0201, which prohibits trains from blocking certain intersections. Do we have anybody on cue on this? No, we do not. Okay. Nobody in, in council chambers either, Mayor. Okay, let's move on to public hearings to obtain a citizen's view and comments regarding the second and final reading of ordinance 2021-03-02 and ordinance amended chapter 10-animals concerning wildlife feeding and hunting. Any comments on this? We haven't received anything for this one either. Okay. Nothing in council chambers either, Mayor. All righty, then let's move on to the consent agenda. Minutes, financial reports, department written reports, board appointments, etc. Notice to the public, the following items are of routine administrative nature. The council has been furnished with background and support material for each on each item <laughs> and or it has been discussed at a previous meeting. All items will be acted upon by one vote without being discussed separately unless requested by a council member in which event the item or items will immediately be withdrawn for individual consideration in its normal sequence after the items not requiring separate discussion have been acted upon. The remaining items will be adopted by one vote. City Manager. Yeah. Uh, Mayor, we have uh, three items on the consent agenda this evening. The first one is the approval of the minutes from the City Council meeting on March 2nd, 2021. The second is the approval of moving Darren Nance from uh, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board for Ward 2 uh, to stay on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, but in the AISD representative board position. And item three is the approval of the application for the Animal Advisory Board of the Ward 4 position by applicant James Etchison. All information was, was uh, included in council's packet. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor, I move to approve, uh, to approve what's presented. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, motion's been made and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries, thank you all very much. And we'll move on to item number eight. It's item, uh, information or discussion items. The first one is mine, and that's discussion on two bills related to the movement of SRSU to Texas A&M University system. Uh, as y'all are aware, there are two bills before the state house. And what they're, uh, what they're concerned with is they're trying to uh, move uh, Saul Ross into the Texas A&M umbrella, which to me makes more sense than with us, uh, Texas State. Uh, you know, in we've had uh, three or two actually presidents since I've been here, and I have just seen a decline in the enrollment and also some of the, the loss of curriculum and professors that have not been replaced. Uh, it's, it's doing a big injustice to our students. Uh, the less curriculum, you, curriculum that you have, the less student population you'll have. And hence, it's like a trickle-down effect. You get less money for the university. You know, uh, Pete Gallego just became president, and he, by all means, is lacking a lot of the tools, which would, to me, would be making him more successful in, in trying to get uh, Saul Ross up and moving again like it used to be back in the early 90s and 80s. So, you know, to me, it's... Um, it's also an economic uh, factor dealing with our city. The less students, the less uh, monies we have flowing into our city coffers. But most of all, it impacts our students here in, in Alpine and elsewhere. You know, they're not gonna come here if they're unsure if they're gonna have a curriculum that's gonna last the full semester or the full four years that they're gonna be here. So why, they should, why should they even bother to come out here? You know, uh, Pete has, you know, is doing, trying to do his best, you know, to, to get this college up and rolling. But to me, I feel that under the Texas A&M uh, umbrella, that there's more resources there to help move uh, Saul Ross forward. 
you know, a lot of our students go elsewhere, you know, they go to Angelo State, which uh, left the state, Texas State umbrella, and it's become very successful. There's other universities that have done the same. But, you know, we need to keep our students here. We need to bring students here also in, into Alpine. Uh, we've, you know, we've lost a tremendous amount of, of the curriculum that we used to have. Um, we had uh, ge the geologist uh, course that was taught here. We've lost that. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, your uh, farrier programs have, have been lost. There's just, you know, so many that have, that have been lost here. And we need to bring them back. We need to make this uh, school successful. We, you know, we're in partners with them. And what I'm looking is just to better the school and to give Pete the tools that he needs to, to make his job a lot easier. Uh, also, you know, I was looking at some of the payroll here and it's, it's kind of sad. There's so many part-time uh, instructors here. And when you have a part-time instructor, you, they don't have any benefits. You know, they average $2,000 for, you know, a little over $2,000 for a semester. Those are not living wages. Those are poverty wages. You know, for a person to go to school and get educated, get their degrees, and just become a part-time uh, instructor, that's not good. That's not good for the, for the city. It's not good for them either. You know, it also places a burden on our, on our uh, city coffers. So with that, you know, I'm, I'm highly recommending that we, uh, that council, uh, agree to you know to let's let's support the resolution. There's two bills right now in the in the Texas House. One by Roland Gutierrez, our new state senator, and also by Eddie Morales, our new state rep, which are, are pushing for this endeavor. Also, they've got a lot of support from the uh, local ranchers and business owners in this area and elsewhere. You know, to get Saul Ross, I want Saul Ross to be a success like it used to be. So we need to, you know, we need to really support this. I think uh, it'd be good for all of us, uh, the city, the school, the students, that we support Saul Ross going to the AM umbrella. And not only that, uh, Saul Ross is, uh, was a governor of the state of Texas, little history, and he also was the one that kept AM from failing back in the day. And look where AM is at right now. It's a very successful uh, program. And they're expanding, and we need to, you know, we need to jump in on the bandwagon on this one. So I'm going to ask for the opinion of each one of you council members to see what you think about this. And we'll start with uh, on the left with Chris. Can I, can I ask you a few questions first? Yeah. What I can barely hear you. Can I ask you a few questions on your presentation first? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You what exactly? Well, we is AM propositioning that is different from the Texas state. Okay, I think I don't know if Mr. Morales is here to answer that because he's been in touch with him. But to, uh, you know, and I'm not going to jump in there and, and tell you exactly what. But you know, we're looking at you know offering more curriculum here, more support. Okay, those are the are the two items that I do know of. So I'm not going to go and, and tell you that, you know, that they're doing all this. Yes, ma'am. Hi, um, I'm Representative Morales' chief of staff. My name's Amy Reister. Um, specifically, the Texas A&M system offers a lot more in administrative support. The Texas state system only has 17 employees, and the A&M system has over 100 so they do a much better job at the legislature in advocating for funding. Um, funding is mainly by enrollment formula, but they ask for additional item requests beyond that. And the A&M government relations team just knows how to work the legislature and how to get more funding. And I think that we would benefit from that. Um, as well as having the AM name attached to the school would help with enrollment. And like I said, it's based on enrollment formula funding. Um, so I think that that would also help with the funding. Um, and then also there's a large number of major donors in the area that are Aggies that would like to see Sol Ross succeed. But I think they're only gonna pony up money if it's part of the A&M system. So but like I mean, Texas even Texas separate from the money. So you're saying that Texas State does not have the ability to get the kind of funds or has not been able? 
to appropriate funds the way Texas A&M has been? I think a &M has been a lot more successful in asking for additional items beyond the formula funding than Texas but State. That, but are you saying that Texas State has, has not been able to do that for us? The, I, know what I mean, they, ha they have had some additional items, but not as much as a and Have we heard from Texas State? We have, we've had discussions with them back and forth. Um, the only thing that they've asked for in terms of additional funding that we know of is tuition revenue bonds, which then puts it into the tuition of the students rather than asking for money from the state coffers. Mayor, why were these questions not put out to Pete when he was here a couple of meetings ago? What's that? Why were these questions not put out to Pete when he was here a couple of weeks ago? There was a special town hall meeting held at Saul Ross, which I had sent uh, the memo uh, to uh, city manager that there was having a, a town hall meeting at Saul Ross, which Pete attended, and there's quite a few in attendance there. So it was made aware the one that uh, the only person that showed up was a former city councilman from Ward 4, Ramon Olivas. Okay. So, so the, the town hall was not, sorry, the town hall was not for the purpose of questioning Pete. It was for Representative Morales to gauge the community support. Uh, Congressman Gallego or President Gallego was only there to do the introduction and to answer questions if anyone had any, but this wasn't anything that we brought up. And, and we don't have this question because we could see the paper trail and the history of it. Um, right, there's nothing that he specifically as a, he can't do anything about the system. We think I he's mean, great and we, we have asked A&M that he stay. We, we don't wanna get rid of Pete. We don't think the problem is a Sol Ross problem. We think it's a Texas state system problem. I mean, there, there are issues at Sol Ross with the declining enrollment and uh, the graduation rates that are much lower compared to the rest of the state. But we don't think Pete can fix that without the support of a better system. I just feel that to, to be asking to make a, a decision like this, we should have heard from Pete. I think it's only right, he is the president of Saul Ross, and I feel that it's only right that we should have taken some of this and given him the opportunity to answer our questions and voice his, voice his concerns, voice his needs, uh, I mean, he's, I feel like we're leaving him out of this. And when it comes right down to it, he is the president of Saul Ross. We've talked to him yeah. back and forth. We even talked to him today. And like I said, he was at the town hall. We maintain regular communication with him. Um, but he, as a state employee, is not, or as an employee of Sol Ross, that he is not legally allowed to take a position. He has to remain neutral and he has from everyone that we know that's even called him and asked him for like off the cuff opinion yes ma'am i understand that and i wouldn't ask him to take a position i'm just asking if we we should have had the option to be able to talk to him to see what he has planned we, a lot of people have to realize that some of the things they may not be happy with right now have not been pete's decisions no and we're not chris we're not saying that at all and i think i made mention of that you know we're trying to better saw Ross and get Pete the tools to be successful because you know we've already had two presidents in the last 10 years and so why not let this one take it take a go at it well and, guess, and we I, like he can't do it my, you've asked for my opinion mayor and i guess what i'm trying to say is that without talking to pete and without getting more information i personally don't feel that i can sign a letter uh not only that plus the fact that we represent the people of Alabama. Have we had our own town hall meetings? Have we reached out to the citizens of Alpine, to uh, employees, to staff of Salt Ross? I know you did mention, but I cannot support something that I have not been able to receive that information. Yeah, so I and that's why we had. To, that's why um, Eddie Morales had the town hall meeting and he invited the citizens of Alpine, and it was quite a number of people that attended that that uh, meeting. And there was quite a lot of support for the move, okay? 
you know, Pete did was there and, you know, all he can do, he cannot take sides on it. But, you know, one of the things that he did mention was in order to get more monies into Sol Ross, you got to have a student body. Okay. And you've got to offer curriculum. And, you know, that's, that's all we're, we're just trying to make Sol Ross successful. And I know, I understand that Pete's your cousin and you're concerned about him. You know, we are concerned because he is a, a, a native of Alpine, but we want it to be successful. No, my okay, concern is, let me, let me go back and, and, and correct that. My concern is not for Pete individually. Okay. I just feel that as president of the, the university, he should be heard. Uh, I, I do believe, like I said, that if we are going to be signing a letter or if I personally am going to be signing a letter in support, I want to hear from the people that I represent from the city of Alpine. I don't want them in a town hall meeting that Mr. Morales has set up to put out his information. I want these people to be able to get what Mr. Morales is telling them, what Pete is telling them, as the president of Soros, not taking sides, but just what can we expect coming on. Provide information from, from a and provide information from Texas State. Not just a one-sided view of Mr. Morales presenting. So I personally could not sign something like that. And, and that's your opinion, that, you know, and we appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. There's uh, Mr. Morales. How you doing, sir? Chris, Chris had some concerns about uh, town hall meetings for her constituents and the citizens of Alpine. Yes, we're, we're here to answer any questions. We, I mean, as you know, we were there in those town halls as well as in uh, Port Stockton, the city of Pecos, Jeff Davis and Presidio. Hello, Chris. So do you want me to tell them again or what, what are, I mean, what are, um, Mr. Morales gave a, a presentation as to why he is wanting to pass these bills. I feel that the people that I represent need to be provided with information from all sides, not just why Mr. Morales feels it's a good idea. Like I said, I want to hear from Texas State. I want to hear what exactly Texas State has feels they can do for Sol Ross State University. I want to hear from the president of Sol Ross. I want to know how the staff, how the employees, I want more information put out there to these people, to the people before we make a decision. And I don't think that that has been done. So I don't feel that I should be making a decision like that. Well, do you have any comments on that? Is he asking us? Yeah. Oh, you have a comment. Mayor, were you referring to me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Um, so, so one, this was not my doing. Um, first, I wanted to get, I know they're visiting out there with the community during the campaign trail and then afterwards that this was an issue that was important to a lot of the community members because they kept bringing it up to me. Um, and there is no commitment from a and because they cannot lobby for or against this, um, this bill. It, it's, a, it's against the state law requirements. They can't lobby. Uh, if you ask uh, Pete, and, and, and Pete knows this also, um, and, and I consider him a, a friend, but he's very diplomatic and he can't take a position for or against it. But all I can say is that we got also a legislative priorities letter from Maverick County. All of the elected stakeholders that were there, we're talking to city council, the school board, Eagle Pass Waterworks board, EPISD, and the county commissioner's court um, they all were in furtherance of, of this push, of this drive, just because of the issues that we've been having. You have a 19.5 right now, if you count the main campus and the satellite campuses, 19.5 four-year graduation it's rate. 14.3 at the main campus. It is 14.3, as Amy is pointing out, in the main campus. So the satellite campuses actually help those numbers go up. We have a 30% six-year graduation rate. That is the second lowest in the state. This is not Pete's doing. I consider Pete a friend. I mentioned that in my town hall. I mentioned that in my press release that I think he would be an asset to the, if, he, if a and were to keep him on. But it doesn't matter which, you've, you've gone through three presidents in the last eight or nine years. Um, 
So we think based on all of the input, based on the information, based on the, the information that we received from Solros also, these numbers on enrollment, they've continued to go down from 2014 to, to present. Um, we have 6,900 kids, for example, in, um, in the uh, Southwest Texas Junior College, which takes care of the first two years. If I'm Sol Rosh and I'm the Texas State University system, you would think, you know what, I'm gonna target and try to keep 90% or more of those uh, kids from the Southwest Texas Junior College to join Sol Rosh. But we go from 6,900 to 714 kids that actually enroll with Sol Rosh. So there's a huge disconnect there that we need to address. And unfortunately, if we don't get Pete, the resources and the funding opportunities that come with something like AM and the powerhouse of AM, it doesn't matter who's there. It's there's not there's not going to be success. He needs the right funding opportunities, the right endowment opportunities, the right uh, minority scholarship opportunities. That's something that someone like AM um, may bring so that he can have success. Otherwise, we find ourselves in a situation where the numbers are going so far down on enrollment and, and, and the university gets paid based on enrollment that, I mean, we run the risk of not being able to sustain a university there in Alpine or the satellite uh, campuses. And so I asked and with the input from both the chancellor and from Pete, we held a town hall meeting. I was going and providing legislative updates and we invited the general public. It was on social media. And we led also in working jointly um, with, uh, with Pete and the chancellor. They offered their place um, to do it there at the university. And I, and I took them up on that because I, I think that we can collaborate and we can work on this. Unfortunately, it's not just some, it's not something that Chancellor McCall feels like he should um, uh, let go of at, the, at this time. He wants to be able to keep it. But just in the last 15, 20 years, we've seen that the changes that needed to be made both to the main campus and the satellite campuses have not taken place. And, and we just think that moving forward based on the input and based on how um, uh, the level of, of attention that a and has given through AgriLife services in every one of the counties that we represent, uh, what they can do with Big Bend State Park, for example, um, and doing internships with the kids. Um, having Blue Origin also out there outside of Van Horn, um, if you don't know, and I don't know if Emmy has visited with you on this, but Blue Origin is a company that is owned by Jeff Bezos, and they're competing with SpaceX. Uh, Jeff Bezos owns Amazon, SpaceX is owned by Elon Musk. They're competing out there, and uh, Jeff Bezos has uh, quietly become the largest landowner in um, Culberson County. Um, um, and, and he's competing with the reusable rockets that he's launching off into space. Just think of the internship opportunities that we can provide our kids also if we were able to do that. And we know for a fact that that hasn't taken place under the Texas State University system. And so those are things that I think that we can focus on and, and we can hopefully uh, Im improve upon if we were to, to have under a different system. This is not new. Eight, nine years ago, Representative Darby moved San Angelo State University from the Texas State University system into Texas Tech. So it's been done and it was based on the same, we sat down with him, it was based on a lot of the same issues that they were having, a drop on enrollment, drop on graduation rates. And that's what prompted that, 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 that move. And he was able to successfully do it. Now go, go, I, I go over and look at San Angelo's numbers. You'll see they have an increased um, uh, enrollment. They're, Gradu graduation rate has also increased. The level of funding opportunities that they have is higher also. And so I think that we can do the same thing for uh, the, the Solros there in Alpine, as well as the satellite campuses. Sir, I do agree with the majority of what you're saying. Uh, I, I agree that we have issues as up at Solros. Uh, I agree with, like I said, the majority of what you said, but you yourself have said that we do not know what to expect from Texas a and Correct. Now, yeah. now so, so that yeah. may not be the answer. And also, sir, you're comparing us to San Angelo, you know, as far as they were able to bring up enrollment, you know, in San Angelo. Well, we're not San Angelo. We cannot offer the other things that San Angelo as a city can offer, the nightlife, uh, jobs, uh, housing. It's, it's totally, it's comparing apples to oranges, in my opinion. I'm just not sure, like I said, that I am comfortable making a decision like this today. 
not that person. I, I can understand you, Councilwoman. I just ask that you take into account all of the factors that I expressed. I know that we may not agree on all 10 of them, but in the end, I think you and I both will both agree that what we want bets, what, what's best for our communities. Um, I don't want, I'm not doing this for, for Alpine to fail or for Solros to fail. I'm pushing this, but because it's a grassroots effort, they've been approached by a number of constituents that had concerns over also the salary of many of the employees there in Alpine. And it's not gonna get any better unless we have the right resources. So I may not have all the answers and I agree. There's zero dollars that Texas A&M because they cannot lobby for or against it. So they have not guaranteed me a single penny. And I run the risk of, let's say this, there is success here and we're able to move it they've never committed a single dollar. So, and I've tried to be very frank and open with every one of you all so that there's no, there's no issues here of like, oh, they've committed X amount of millions of dollars or they're gonna do this and they're gonna do that. They can't because of the, the state statute that does not allow them to lobby for or against it. The one thing that Chancellor Sharp said to me in the video conference that I had with him was if it is the will of the legislature to do this and they put this on our laps to, to put Solros on their laps, we will happily take over it. Those were his words to me. To me, that was a green light that they're eager and all we have historically is to go by, let's say what they did in Texas A&I Kingsville and how they turned that, that system around. Look at the small junior college that they had in Laredo and how they flipped that into a powerhouse in Laredo and what they made uh, Laredo, uh, a, a lot of the improvements and a lot of the continued growth in Laredo has been in large part because of the university at T Tammy U, Texas A&M University International. That historically, that's all that I can give you in the form of, well, wh what's A&M doing or what are they going to do? We'll just look historically at what they've done to these other campuses. And in your opinion, what will happen if we do not fix the problems at the rate that they're wanting to see? Uh, Pete will have the same tools that the previous presidents had. No, I'm not asking about Pete. I'm saying Texas A&M. You're saying that, you know, things will change. We're going to get this. We're going to do that. And we're going to go up. If it does not go up at the rate that Texas A&M wants it to go, are we running a risk of losing Soros? I, I, I don't believe that's never been in discussion, Councilwoman. Um, the issue has been like how to fix the problem. And I don't think that they've ever shied away. They have the resources, they have yeah. the manpower to turn this thing around. Um, and all like, again, at the Capitol over here, look, I'm a UT undergrad and it drives me nuts to have to admit this, but they are running a stellar operation. I mean, I've met with three or four of their government relations folks. They're constantly uh, providing input to us and services that'll help during the winter storm. They provided uh, both in text messages and emails, they provided me information for ranchers and cattle, uh, uh, cattle farmers uh, and farmers out there just to help them through the winter storm. If they do even a quarter of what they've been doing here in the legislature to help Sol Ross, it'll be a success. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Councilman Stevens. We can't you're hear you. Hey, Rick, you're on, you're on mute, Rick. Okay, now you can there hear you me, go. hopefully. There you go. Yes, yes sir. I apologize yes, for yes, being sir. late to city council meeting. I was on, uh, I'm up in Pecos right now, sitting in the parking lot, just finishing a, uh, a court case, having been on jury duty and been the foreman. Uh, so, and, and I apologize for uh, missing part of the conversation. I, I guess my put relative to Saul Ross, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm a data dink. I'm a, I got a master's in computer science, a math degree. I've done a lot of looking at the data. You know, th there are a number of schools in the a &M system, including Texarkana, when you look at cost per graduation, they are worse than Saul Ross. And, and so I like, you know, uh, Councilwoman uh, Rodriguez uh, talking about, you know, commitments. In my view, and having participated in the legislative process, not as a legislator, but I, while I certainly understand the issues that there can be no guarantees, and certainly, you know, uh, you know, uh, President Sharp and uh, and uh, and what goes on with uh, uh, the Texas State University, they cannot participate. I just think you've got it structured wrong. If I was you all from a legislature standpoint, what I would do is let's go build a comparative plan to see what would happen, and you, the legislature, have the authority to grant that. 
you can grant that before you make a decision. And in the meantime, allow Pete to press on, who's only been in the job for eight months, knows Alpine and Saul Ross better than anyone that's ever been there. I'm just struggling why it's got to happen now, particularly with the enrollment improvements, the scholarship activities, the engagements that are underway. And, and a guy who ran a, a business of, of $10 billion and 26,000 people, I understand change takes time. And when you make change, it causes things to stop. My put would be allow Pete to go forward to press on with this year. Let Texas State and AM figure out what their approaches might be. Let the legislature and the citizens take a look at that before this would come before the House and the Senate. The, the, the concern, concern, you know, just to know, respond just to that, to that, it's that we've been, that we've been I'm hearing some echo. I'm sorry, I don't know if it's me. Uh, and, and council member, maybe you need to put yourself back on mute. Yeah, that's better. So th this is an issue that has been existing for 15, 20 years, even before Pete uh, arrived. Um, that's the, sorry, we lost a, a sheet. Um, that, that's, that's what we have to deal with, that people, if we tell them, the constituents, when I went out there, and it's like, and, and don't be doing what, what, what previous representatives did, what they just promised, but they never actually formalized it and moved forward with it. Uh, 20 years ago, when Tracy King was redistricted and they added Maverick County into his district, he took the mayor, the judge, and myself over to Austin to see if we could sell them on doing something and taking over the, uni the, the, uh, the University of Texas, taking over the system there in Maverick and, and the satellite campuses. And they had no appetite for it. Um, here, we didn't hear the same thing from a and We actually heard if it's the will of the legislature and it lands on our laps, we would happily take over. To me, I saw that as a green light go, and especially from the constituents telling me, we have data from a number of the other universities that show that the, I don't know how you were comparing that, and I'd be happy to share that information because I think it is important if you can share that information to, to us. We sent it to the mayor, all this is available and you can forward it, but I like to see what the council member was, was speaking with as far as that uh, Texarkana school, because we have all these comparables that show that the tuition is very similar and in line with what um, what what, uh, what Sol Ross is paying. Sol Ross is paying. And also we've asked A&M if they would be willing to formulate a plan to show us what we could, what could be done so that we can use that in our uh, presentation. And they said that that would be considered lobbying and they, and until the school is moved underneath them, they are not going to expend the resources to formulate a plan or do a study on this. On this. I've also visited, so I, I, I continue and I continue. And I I don't understand I, 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 why you the legislature can't give them that latitude to go work it. This, to me, is stuck in bureaucracy. And, you know, if, if you were to say, hey, I'm laying out a plan for the, for the next, you know, three or four years and never see the plan, it's based on promises. I'll be happy to share the data that I have, uh, and I would like to see their data. Frankly, Mayor, I'm disappointed you've not shared any data with us, Mayor. I did, uh, uh, okay, I, I had text uh, uh, Mr. Morales today that I hadn't received that either. I hadn't received either. Okay, so you don't have any data. Thank you, Mayor. But, no, sir. No, sir. In no, my sir. mind, no, having the data is really important and what a plan looks like. You're talking about making a major move, and I represent constituencies, the you old know, fifth of Alpine, and I've had a huge number come back and say, I don't see any value. I don't support this. This is not the thing to do. It's those who are vocal who are pushing it and the rest are saying leave it alone we hope uh we just set this aside for another year so i appreciate but i guarantee you if you were to say going to delay it for a year because you're going to be in office uh for a couple of years here at least and then say hey we're bringing it back up to the next legislature give Pete a chance i think you have a much better chance of getting support going forward yeah so we 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 only meet up here in the legislature once every two years. And so, so if, if we didn't try it now, we would not be able to try it until two years from now. And knowing that this had been an issue that existed for close to 20 years, we needed to move forward. Uh, and, it, and it wasn't done without input from the community. Well, there's it, it is, in my mind, 
a very divisive discussion right now, like so many things in our political environment are, there are people who are hard over in one place, hard over in the other, and without a plan, it's hard to convince people to go in that direction, other than it's just, well, we're going to go do it because a and is better. Tuition goes up. That's been our experience. Saul Ross is a very unique campus, including down the Rio Grande from a population standpoint. You know, the population of Saul Ross has not, I mean, of, uh, of uh, Alpine hasn't increased in the last 15, 20 years. It's 6,000 people or it's 6,000 people. So being able to recruit people into the program, I mean, I knew Richard Maestras. My wife brought me to Alpine, you know, 10 years ago. Frankly, pretty frustrating in terms of what's going on. I think Bill Kibler did not do a great job in terms of pulling the community and going to work at it. Now, for the first time, there's someone who actually lives and breathes Saul Ross. And that's why I say, my view, give him a chance to go work it. I get the point about another two years. I think, you know, uh, hold people accountable. Now, I made it a point in my press release also, Councilman, to let everybody know that I support Pete. And I would hope uh, that I consider him an asset. And that's in the materials that, that we forward. And hopefully they'll be distributed to all of you all. And if you have any questions, please be able to feel free to follow up with us. But I made it a point to say that he was an, an asset and that we could keep him. Uh, if the A and M system could keep him, I think it'd be great because he understands Alpine. He understands the needs of, of, of the, the satellite campuses. He just needs the resources. The resources. So, so, so that's fair. If you were to actually write in your bill to maintain the current president of Saul Ross for a memo at X number of years, uh, then I think you get people to say, okay, Pete's leading regardless of it's a &M. I know you don't want to tell a &M what to do or not to do, but you know, quite frankly, uh, unless there's some teeth behind, he's a real asset, you know, AM can do whatever they want. Yeah. So yeah. we can do this in your resolution that you're contemplating today, you can pass it with that additional uh, point. Uh, only if Pete Gallego remains and, and the bill addresses that. And I'd be happy to try to include that, not ha not to try, I will. Uh, file an amendment or whatever is necessary to add that language so that it is it is exactly what Alpine needs because I, again I consider him a friend I've known him for 20 years I helped him every time he ran in Maverick County and I think that he can do good it's about bringing the right resources to make him succeed to help him succeed so mayor if you want to incorporate that language uh, feel free and it says that, that we, we are adopting this resolution but only if Pete Gallego where to stay on board as president, and I can incorporate that into the bill. We, we can do that, and you know, but ultimately, it's up to the council to decide on this. You know, you know where I stand on it. But since I don't have any uh, power, uh, uh, you know, whatever the council wishes you know, to do, and that's you know what I'm obliged to do. But again, as uh, as a private citizen, I support it. Uh, and again, I did not get that info. And I had texted you or called you this afternoon about that, that I had not received it. Yeah, uh, did you check? It, it, it's going to come from Amy, not from my email, but it's going to come from Amy Reister, R-I-S-T-E-R. -E and I'll so make sure again, to resend it to you. Yeah, because I'm looking we, at we, my... We sent, it, we sent it to all of the district judges about three weeks ago mm -hmm. uh, and, and the mayors also. And I can understand it could have either gone on your filter or something. And then that's why we discussed earlier today to resend it, but it got sent from yeah. Amy and we'll do it right, right now. That way, before the meeting is over, you can, you can share that information or make co copies so that the other council members can have access or you can email right, it to them. I'm going through my emails right now and I just don't see it in here. Amy, he doesn't, have the email look we need to email it again we can resend it. amy uh there were two uh i don't know if we got sent to but mine is at uh mayor.ramos at ci.alpine.text.us mayor.ramos at ci.alpine.txt.us yeah yes correct. So we have, but I'll, I'll we will make sure that you get it right now and 
I would be completely open to you including that as part of the resolution. We all we did was sent a sample resolution to all of the um, uh, the county judges and the, the mayors uh, there in HD 74. You all can tweak it and modify it and include that language and let's say say that it's not that 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 it won't take effect and you're not supporting it unless Pete Pete stays on board. Yeah, no, I'm I'm still scrolling through it. I just don't see it. Okay, we we can resend it after the Zoom is over. Okay, and then I'll just forward it to to city manager, and he could forward it or decimate it to to uh, the rest of the council. Well, does anybody else? have the same concern or would like to incorporate that same language that they would support it? Martin? Yes, I am. Yes, sir. Would you feel comfortable with that? I'm for the move. If there okay. are benefits in enrollment, salaries, and as long as Pete stays as president, that's all. Okay. All right, Betty. I'm uh, for it. I'm, I think it's a good idea. Okay. Let's see, Maria. Yeah, I'm with uh, Chris and Rick. I think I'd like to see a little more information and I want to see Pete and Sora succeed. That's That's all before I give my opinion on it. Okay, and that's fair enough. And that's, you know, I think you know, we do want Pete to stay there. And, you know, it's never been discussed that he was gonna be removed or anything like that. And I've talked to Pete about uh, about it, you know, briefly also. But yeah, if uh, if that's the council's wishes, then we'll go ahead as uh, Mr. Morales said, we'll incorporate that in the resolution if that makes everybody feel comfortable. Rick? You're on mute. Yeah, Mayor, I presume we're not taking any action tonight. We're gathering data, so we'll have this in right. the next city council right. meeting for discussion. So uh, Correct. Uh, we'll finish Correct. that debate uh, at our next meeting. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll get that information to you, Mayor, and council Mayor, members and council immediately uh, um, uh, as soon as we uh, leave this. Uh, we have our computer. We have access to the information. We'll forward it. Okay, very good. And I'll forward it uh, first thing tomorrow at uh, I'll go to the city chambers and so that everybody can get a copy of it. All right. Do you all okay. have any other questions for us? I do, if I may. I'm the city secretary for the city of Alpine. Hi, Ms. Cynthia. How are you, Mr. Morales? Good. Um, Amy had mentioned earlier that they were going to change the name to Texas A&M after we had been told that it was not gonna be changed. My other concern is, or question is, would the chancellor, the Board of Regencies change if it switched over to Texas A&M? And what if, even if we put on the resolution that we want Pete to remain as president of Saw State University, it's still going to be at the discretion of A&M. What if they decide that they do not want to keep him as the president or even offer him a position? So the name is not going to change. That, that is not a part of the bill at all. And if it is not a part of the bill, they do not have the discretion to do that. And also if we include in the bill that Pete must stay for a certain number of years, if it is in statute, the Board of Regents does not have the authority to go beyond what is in statute. And yes, so well, the, the, board of the Board of Regents is tied to the to each system. So there is a Texas State Board of Regents and an A&M Board of Regents. And the chancellor is the head of the system as an employee. And so it would be a different set of regents oh, and a the different chancellor. chancellor. But it would be Chancellor John Sharp. But he cannot go beyond what is in statute. So if we put it into the bill, they can't 
change that. Can't, cannot. Cannot. Okay. okay, those were the only questions I had. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Ready? Is there anybody else that's got comments on this? Geo. Um, the only person that wanted to make a comment was Dr. Rangra, and I'm not sure if he's still in council chambers. Okay, can uh, city manager, is Dr. Yeah, Rangra still there? Dr. Rangra's still here. Did, did you want to make a comment, Dr. Rangra? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Well, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, my state representative Andy, Andy, and the city council member, and also the honorable mayor. It's a pleasure to be back in this uh, in this place uh, where the wise people live. Like good to, see, five, good to have you back. Well, we elected uh, five and uh, six people uh, to take care of the city affairs, and I'm very happy with the way the discussion has been going on. Especially Saul Ross. The question that was asked by uh, Councilman Chris regarding Texas State University system. Let me tell you something about that. I was, since I was, I was a part of uh, the faculty starting in 1962, I retired in 2013. Way back about 2010 or so. Soros started losing programs. And uh, the uh, chemistry program, geology, biology, and other programs were almost eliminated. Not eliminated, but almost, I said. And uh, in 2012, when a young man from Eagle Pass named Poncho Nevarez, he decided to run for the, for the state that position. He came to Alpine and he was asked for some odd reason to meet with me. And I was the mayor at that time, uh, I believe. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it was uh, before that. I was not the mayor at that time. Either. So I met him and uh, he asked me if I would support him. I said, well, if that could happen. But, uh, he said, what are the concerns of the faculty, the people in our mind that they find serious? I said, as a faculty member, my concern is about the program that we are losing. And it is going to jeopardize the existence of some loss. If you can turn this, the system around, not to, if you can bring those programs back, I think that'll be great. And the faculty, the students, and also the community will like it then, obviously. Okay, he got elected, and he will explain to you if you want him to, he, he, will, he can tell you that, what I'm telling you. He got elected, and about four or five months, or maybe earlier than that, he called me, he said, he has not forgotten the promise he made to me, and he will do everything he can to make sure that the programs that we have lost, or we may be losing in the future, it doesn't happen. Okay, he went to work. And you know who opposed it? The chancellor of the system. Who told him that once you are brand new, say that, don't get involved in this. Once you said, listen, I made a promise to a young a, a, a person over in, in Alpine, he's it, and I got to do something about this. Just imagine. But, 
So on server of the system opposing the efforts on the part of the state lab to get the program back. So we could teach those, pro those courses to the school. Poncho, with the help of a state senator, a Republican, who was chairing the education committee, and other people were able to get the program back. That is why we have chemistry program back at Southwest. And you don't want to take my word, pick up the phone, call Poncho to our Saudi system. Okay. <laughs> Now I said, okay, now I'm glad that you guys have reached a mutual agreement to include this item about P. And uh, I, personally, I don't think Texas A&M will take a chance of not letting P continue. P is the greatest asset. That is the best thing that the Texas State University system did by putting Pete as a president of South Wales. Pete has a vision, I'm sure. Pete is a local boy. He graduated from local high school. He went to college, South Wales State University. He graduated from here. He has the best interest of this university and the communities. It's not our point. It's also other communities for Davis. Procedure for Stockton and beyond. So we are not looking at just 6,000 people in our time in relation to South Ross. We should be looking at people living everywhere in Texas. We want to bring them over here. And how will they come over here? They'll come here when we offer programs that can assure them that they will be that this, they will be able to graduate within a certain length of time. And the way it is right now, Texas State University system is not the tool that Pete needs to help him get to where he wants to go. He needs a new tool, which is more important, which is more effective. When you look at Texas State University system, it has four campuses, Sorrow State University, St. Marcus, which is called Texas State University. That's the name. The Mars State University and San Houston State University. Now of these four, campuses, only campus that use the name of Texas State is San Marcos for some odd reason. I have not been able to find out why, but that's beside the point. The Texas State University system has 80, about 80,000 80, students. Of that, Soros has 2,800. All these four campuses have to compete for the money that is in the field, which is not much. Like I think of what your uh, state representative can tell you that he is also sponsoring a bill about $20 million or something like that to help solve us to prove his campuses here and in the uh, Eagle Pass in uh, Dario and Obama as well. He doesn't have to do it with his text data. I could be wrong, he can correct it. He does not have to go to these two guys and say, would you help me? Mayor, time. Right, okay. I'm sorry. But anyway, uh, I'm very happy to see what you, uh, what the, that you guys have going to do something about South House, about the communities, not South Alpine community only, but other communities around it, and also the kids. When I came here in 62, long, long time ago, the kids I worked with, they had no great grandparents. 
and their kids have gone to school. Do you want these kids, their kids to go to school? Doctor, Doctor Avanash, you've had your, your time limit. Okay. Sorry, sir. I'm sorry. Again, I want to appreciate the opportunity that you guys gave me to present my views in a rambling way. And uh, good luck. Thank you very much for coming, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, any more discussion? Okay, I'll get all, I'll forward all that information to the rest of the council tomorrow, okay? And let's move on to the second item, uh, and that's on uh, planning of great security emergencies. You know, I kind of want to uh, throw this out at the city council. Uh, we can better prepare, be more prepared for in case we have another emergency such as we did a few weeks ago, where I'd say over half the town was completely isolated without power. Uh, so uh, for one, our city council chambers was also without power. And one idea that I've thrown around for some time is to provide backup generators. So in case we have to accommodate any of our folks, give them a warm place to stay with bathrooms and, and hot and cold uh, running water. So I'm just throwing this at council just think about it, come up with ideas of how we could improve in case there's another emergency here in Alpine. And you know, you don't have to come up with an idea right now. Um, probably next meeting, uh, give it some thought uh, between now and then, and then see see what you all can come up with. There but I'm all- status on the emergency management plan I had asked you some meetings ago on. What's that? What is the status of the emergency management plan I had asked you a few meetings ago about? Mm -hmm. What okay. is the status of that? What we do, we're, we're piggybacking um, the Brewster County. Okay. Yeah, we don't have it. We don't have good relations with Brewster. No, we, we don't. And no, we don't. And Chris, city manager and I talked about it uh, oh, about a couple of months ago, a month and a half ago that we need to sit down and formulate an emergency plan for the city of Alpine. And because of what's transpired, the COVID and also with the ice storm, we haven't been able to sit down, but that's on our agenda to sit down and come up with, with an emergency plan for the city. And one of mine is again, you know, uh, generators, uh, we, the generators we do have that they're up to speed, uh, make sure that all our, you know, resources, uh, that we could take advantage of them. But no, we don't have a plan as of yet, but yes, the city manager and I have talked about it. So you're asking for recommendations then to put yes, into- Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, right. Can, can, can I back up on this real quick? Cause actually yes, on sir. February 16th, I had reported out uh, relative to the power outage and uh, what we were doing from a staff perspective. Uh, actually, you know, our staff is working on their emergency plans. Uh, Eddie and I are already working on a retrofit for this, the Civic Center. I think I had talked about that a little bit, uh, as well as uh, uh, Councillor Curry. Uh, she and Jennifer, we were sharing the emergency ops plan on the animal uh, services side, and, and Councillor Curry is going to take that to the Animal Advisory Board. So. We've actually got all this in motion. I think I had shared with that a couple of meetings ago. So uh, the target date for our staff is the end of March. Uh, I sent a note back out uh, today and then we've got our staff meeting tomorrow for them to get their updates. Chief and I spent some time on Friday talking about his policies and plans that include this as well. So uh, we've actually got that in motion and my plan was to have that in front of council uh, in April, okay? Does that answer your question, Chris? Yes, sir. Eric's, uh, Eric's, Eric's, Eric's on it and he's doing it. What's that? I said, yes, sir. Eric's on it and he's getting it done. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Anything else? Mayor, if I may, it's Eddie Morales again. Yes, sir, Eddie. The email has been sent to you again. I got it. I got it. Uh, I, 
as well as a, a city manager so that he could be right. distributing it to the rest of them. We look forward yeah. to our discussion hopefully next week on this so that we can make sure that the resolution includes that language that Mr. Stevens um, proposed with respect to Pete and it can address the concerns because I think we're on the same page as far as wanting what's best for the community and also wanting Pete to remain on board if possible. Correct, and that's House Bill 2336. Yeah. Yes. Thank okay, you, Mayor. If there's it. anything else, we're gonna uh, go ahead and, and, and leave your meeting. Is that okay? Okay, well, thank you all very much for attending. Thank you, Amy. Well, you I know two weeks, two weeks from now. Two weeks? Oh, no, actually it's three weeks because we're not gonna meet again until April. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I'll give you all a notice. Okay. Yes, sir. Amy, that'll thank you, be on April 6th. Huh? What's that, April. Cynthia? It'll be on April 6th. Okay. Council thank you, Ms. Cynthia. Thank you, council members. I appreciate uh, me and all, all of you. Have a good day. Okay. Y'all have a good evening. Okay. Let's move on to item number nine, action items to be accompanied by a brief statement of facts, including where funds are coming from. If applicable, action items limited up to 10 per meeting after being called upon by the mayor, 10 citizens are required to state their names and the ward in which they reside. Priority will be given to the citizens of Alpine and those who own business or property in the city. Individuals who do not live in or own business or property in the city limits of Alpine will be allowed to speak if there's time available. City manager. Mr. Mayor and Council, item number one is to discuss, consider, and take appropriate action to approve the second and final reading of Ordinance 2021-03-01 an ordinance rescinding and repealing the adoption of Ordinance 2020-02-01, which prohibited trains from blocking certain intersections. Uh, first reading was um, last Council meeting. Okay. Mayor, I make a motion to discuss, consider, and take appropriate action to approve the second and final reading of Ordinance 2021-0301, an ordinance rescinding and repealing the adoption of Ordinance 2020-02-01, which prohibit trains from blocking certain intersections. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, motion is made and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Okay, motion carries, thank you. Okay, let's go to item number two, uh, uh, Councilman Curry. Councilman yeah, Carson I'd like Curry. to, I'd like to make a motion to discuss, consider and take appropriate action on the second and final reading of ordinance 2021-03-02, an ordinance amending chapter 10, animals concerning wildlife feeding and hunting. Okay, is there a second? I second. Okay, motion's made and second. Any discussion? This is Rick, I'll second if I'm still alive on the video here. What's that? Yeah, we have a second, Rick. Yeah. Okay. All righty, any Rick. discussion? Great. Okay. All righty, discussion. There you no know, discussion. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. No discussion. Okay, it's unanimous. Motion carries. Thank you all very much. Let's go to item number three, and that's Councilman Stevens. Rick, can you hear me? I think he lost transmission on it. Council of Stevens. I've got a terrible, yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. I propose since I've got such a lousy connection here sitting outside the courthouse in Pecos that we table this to the next meeting. You want to table it? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and table it for the next meeting then. Let's move to item number 10, Council comments and answers. We'll start with Chris. No comments, sir. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Councilman Council Person Curry. No comment, thank you. Okay, uh, Councilman Sandapti. No comment, thank you. Okay, Councilman Stevens. 
my apologies for uh, not being able to participate fully uh, federal jury duty called. So you had good. civic duty to do. Okay. And did I? Betty. 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 No, Betty. Comments. Betty. no comments. Okay. I want to thank you. We had a great discussion. Uh, and again, I apologize. I did not receive that till just now. And I'm going, I'm going to be looking in my junk mail, see if it's not in there. But yeah, it's important that we get all the info out. We're, you know, it's not anything that's secretive. We're, you know, trying to about it. But tomorrow morning, I'll make sure that everyone gets a copy of it. Okay. And let's go to, we're going into an executive session, looks like. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn for the meantime. Yes, sir. So Mr. Mr. May, I propose we uh, move into executive session uh, consistent with the applicable Texas government codes to discuss uh, an update on the county jail property in the old city hall annex. Okay, is there I'll a second? second? I'll second. Okay, motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, time. Okay, time. 735. Okay.
Okay, Betty's back. Council's back. Maria. Okay, Maria's back. We're waiting on Rick. Yep, Rick's back. Every, everybody's back, Mayor. Okay, good deal. Okay. Seem to have lost. Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We can we can hear you. Okay, so uh there's no action required then. Yeah. Okay, no. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Can't do that yet, Mayor. I missed all that, Ken. Just back, back on the that? Can't get the motions again. Okay, you, you, I'll entertain a motion. Well, no action. I, I want to entertain a motion no. for that. No, the first motion's got to come back in the public session. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I lost my whole screen. All I have is audio. Okay, I'll entertain the motion to get back into regular session. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay, a second. And like I said, I can't see anybody on the screen. So Rick, well, you got me this thing. Yeah, Chris seconded. Okay, Chris seconded. Okay, all those, Thank you. all those in favor of going back into regular session, raise your right hand. Five zero. Okay, okay. five zero. We're back into regular session. Mr. Mayor, I move we take no action relative to the uh, discussion regarding the old city hall complex and jail. Okay, sir. Thank you. Second on that. Okay, I heard a second in the background. Yes, yeah, second by Councillor Rodriguez. Okay, any discussion? Councillor Rodriguez. All those in favor? Raise your right hand. Five, five, nothing, Mayor. Five, nothing. Okay. Thank you all very much. There's no action Mr. on it. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move we adjourn so I can drive home. Okay. Why don't you drive home then? It's not debatable. We're adjourned. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and be careful. Yes, sir.